Hi and welcome. My name is Arwen Brooke and today we're going to do a workout that includes and features the pinky ball. If you don't have one of these, a tennis ball will do or a lacrosse ball or something similar. We're also going to use the foam roller and a TheraBand. You can replace these also with other props from around the home. And then finally, if you choose to use a lumbar support in your mat work, that would be good to have here as well. All right, let's get started. So we're starting with a pinky ball and it's under our foot. So starting on our first side still, we're massaging the underside of our foot. You have um, a great deal of opportunity to massage tension in the arch of the foot. So you might start there and put the ball a little bit towards the inner arch. That's some of those really powerful um, connections between the forefoot and the rear foot. And those are some of the ones that get strained and stressed when we're not wearing really great shoes or our feet aren't active enough. So um, plantar fasciitis and other sort of um, ways that we can suffer can come about through this region being inflamed or under um, mobilized and activated. And then try the outer arch. It's also a bit of a um, under appreciated zone in our foot and can be kind of squirrely to maintain balance on, but you're gonna go carefully into that row. And then the ball of the foot. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the ball, position it under the ball of the foot, so that means you're kind of right um, beneath these knuckles where your toes meet your foot. And you're gonna land your foot, your heel down, and put the weight of your body into the ball now. So you've got the ball of your foot supported by your pinky ball, and you're gonna let your toes kind of curl over the ball. So you've, you're kind of almost gripping it. Yeah, and then back off and let the toes lift up. And then again, rock forward and wrap your toes around the ball and then release. So we're just gonna go into this weight shift, this deepening and then releasing of pressure and weight and then come back. And that's something you can do even more nuanced, meaning wherever you put the ball, you can emphasize your stretch. But for right now, we're just kind of considering a, whole, a stretch for the whole top of the foot, you'll feel the skin of the foot on the top and the muscles around those joints kind of spread and stretch. And then you're going to keep some weight into the ball and you're going to pivot on your heel and let your foot and ankle sort of twist to bring the inner border of your foot and then the outer border of your foot to the mat. Let it be just yummy and mobilizing. Nothing should hurt. If you're not able to touch the mat with either side of the foot, that's okay. We're just mobilizing. We're asking your ankle and all the bones of your foot. And I'll remind you just because it's always amazing to, to really recognize that your foot has 26 bones in it. And those bones all connect through joints and joints are meant for movement. So that's a lot of joints, a lot of movement potential in our feet and they get a bit frozen. So we're trying to invite that movement back in. Okay. And then coming back to a sort of... Uh, Start position we're going to move the ball under the heel and then just take your uh, toes to the mat and swivel your heel side to side so you're massaging the connections of all that plantar fascia and everything else um, where it attaches to the heel and some days this might be the most tender spot and other days maybe not but we're just looking at the whole underside of the foot giving it all our attention Okay, and then maybe just a few more full foot rolls, heel to toe, heel to toe, kind of flushing out any last little bit of stuckness. Okay, and then we're gonna step off of the ball and stand for a moment on our two feet and just take inventory, take a moment to feel the difference, right? So it's not to say that your the foot you didn't roll feels awful, but the foot that you did roll likely feels something different. And for me, it's like there's just an openness to the bottom of the foot that's allowed to receive the ground and kind of root into it. So what I'm going to have you do is go ahead and get started on the other side. Put that ball in position anywhere you like and start to roll. I like to visualize that the ball is covered in paint and that I'm using it to coat the bottom of my foot with paint. So we're going to just make sure we don't leave any little sort of spaces or holidays, as we say, in the biz of painting. Um, we are trying to be kind to our foot. So while it might feel really good to put a lot of weight into the ball,
some of you might not be enjoying that as much. And for those of you that are a little tender there today, just do what feels good. Put a little bit of weight, take your time. It doesn't have to be really rapid, um, but sometimes it's demonstrated that way and that's just because it feels good to that person that's demonstrating. And again, don't forget to try out your inner arch and your outer arch. Good. And then if you need more time on any particular spot, you take it, right? But now we're gonna put our heel down on the mat or floor and then take your toes and do that sense of kind of wrapping them. Sorry, the ball is underneath the ball of the foot and we're wrapping our toes around the ball as we also weight shift forward. And then we're gonna just sway back, letting the weight come off of the ball a little bit and then wrap and rock into it. So just a few more like that, going into and out of this sort of pressure release into the foot. You're feeling the ball kind of push up into those knuckles of the foot and then give you that sort of stretch to the top of the foot, right? And it's amazing how much even for myself who values this, this um, practice very much, how it still can feel just so delicious just like the first time again and again. And then we're gonna take our weight into the ball a little bit and keep that pressure just that feels really um, friendly to us and start to rock and twist the foot side to side so the inner border and outer border can come towards the mat. Maybe they touch, maybe they don't. The knee will sway a little bit side to side, but you're steering from the toe, the ankle, and the foot itself. Good. And then we're gonna just transfer the ball to the heel and then just rock your heel side to side, your Sandra D moment, sassy and doing something positive for your feet. Okay, and then you can do just a few more little full foot rolls. Okay, we're gonna step down from there and just allow our feet to come into focus again. Now, I feel both of my feet in the same way. Just it's really sort of like they can kind of spread out and anchor into the mat. Now, as many of you know, I took a yoga teacher training course this past year. And one of the tools that I found really useful is this um, term they use for your feet when they're making contact with the earth. It's called padabanda or foot lock. And what I want you to just know about that is we're just using it to identify this connection you have with the ground right now. You have those four corners of your feet from the outside of the big toe mound to the outside of the pinky toe mound in the front, and then the inner and outer heel. Then you just feel all four of those corners anchored right now. You've got padabanda, and we're gonna just refer back to that in a, in a little bit. So now you're gonna take your pinky ball and we're gonna use it at the wall in our shoulders. So um, I appreciate that some of you might not have wall space that makes this the most accessible, but all you need is a few square inches. I'm going to move you over here so you can see what I'm up to. So see if you can find just a few inches. It doesn't have to be much to put your ball between your body and the wall. Okay. So what we're going to do is take our pinky ball and set it up behind one of our shoulders. And really, there's not really anywhere you could put it that it would be a really bad idea, um, but it's one of the most popular and famous zones for tension is in the upper shoulder, kind of between your shoulder blade and your neck. So that's your upper trapezius. And we'll start there or anywhere that you arrive that feels good. And then you might be really already pretty fond of this already and familiar with it, but you just lean, lean back, and then you get to bounce and bend your knees. And you can sway side to side and you are likely to find some interesting stuff there. So whatever you're carrying around, whether it's baggage or groceries or tension, these are some of the places that it gets stored. So you're just giving it some TLC. Um, you can go in between the shoulder blade and the spine, those are your rhomboids and it's lower traps. And then you can relocate the ball whenever you need to. You can come out over the shoulder blade yeah. And what we're 
we're doing is we're going to help to take that tissue we talked about in past classes how our tissue can kind of become sort of more solid more dense and congested and we're just bringing massage into it to help with the liquefying process to help loosen up connections make it all a little bit more pliable and so what i'm going to have you do is stick with that same shoulder and just make your way around so you're going to put the ball now on the outside of your shoulder and take your body sideways and you can just rock and roll side to side massaging those muscles that connect your arm into your neck and torso and then you can do up and down a little bit and then maybe even a circle this is all based on what feels good in your body everything i say from you know start to finish in this pinky ball massage phase of class is totally just a suggestion now this next part is going to be a little harder to see but we're going to put the ball in the front of the shoulder and then take the arm that you're um, on that side massaging and reach it back away from the pinky ball and so you'll position it and then start to lean into it i'm a little bit turned away from the wall so just to give my self room and then i'm massaging anywhere between the collarbone and the top of the shoulder towards the sternum and away out towards the actual shoulder joint and it's also pretty likely that you find something here that's on the tender side so be really positive what you're doing and it can also be really intense so be kind take your time breathe through it and listen to your body okay all right we're going to just pause there and as we did with our feet i'm going to just tuck the ball between my legs for a moment i'm just going to let my arms hang by my side and just feel them for a moment and then move through a few shoulder shrugs and i have to say my right side the one i massage feels a bit lighter a little less dense and then we're going to go ahead and make that all happen on the other side so we'll start where we did on the first side we'll tuck the ball behind our shoulder and you'll set it up maybe in that upper trap these are things that um again just suggestions and go with what feels good and yes you might lose your ball every once in a while as you fiddle and find the perfect spot um chasing pinky balls in class has always been one of my most familiar memories we're gonna the the ball kind of drift around and explore the whole back of the shoulder again maybe you're going down between the shoulder blades and lowering and lifting up will help you run up and down that little channel there and maybe you're coming out over the surface of the shoulder blade and just taking a moment anywhere you need it if you find something really interesting and you want to stay there sometimes applying pressure um, in stillness and breathing can really be a magical ticket to releasing some tension but if you are enjoying being still sometimes moving is more sort of available to us for our mind it doesn't feel as um, torturous if we get to keep moving so whatever works for you and then we'll take the ball to the side and um, turn to the side as well to roll out the muscles of the deltoid and getting into the front of the tricep muscle fibers and the biceps and then dipping up and down and circles all of these things that might feel really good trying them out and then we're going to come once again to the front of the shoulder so you're going into that sort of little hollow where the front of the shoulder sort of dips back and then placing the ball there reaching that same side arm a little bit back so that it's not just out of the way but kind of opening the chest as you massage into it and we're going along the top of the collarbone and then maybe a little bit more circular once you find where your most tender places are and breathe mm -hmm. all of it's very interesting over here in my body okay so when you're done all you're going to do is just again take that moment 
pausing to feel your two sides. Shoulder rolls are gonna be a nice friendly thing to do next. I'm gonna relocate us to our usual spot and then we're gonna grab our TheraBand. So you can find that now and set up. If you don't have a TheraBand, a strap will do or belt. You can keep your pinky ball nearby, but what we'll do to start is take our TheraBand and both hands out in front of our shoulders. So we've released tension in the muscles around the shoulders and now we're gonna uh, just take advantage of that. We're gonna move and find some mobility there. So we're gonna stretch those muscles and they've been warmed up a little bit through that warming massage. And so this action should feel pretty friendly. If you run into anything that doesn't, you just widen your grip on the TheraBand, right? And then we'll bring it around to the front. Now you're gonna hold on to both ends and then set the middle down on the mat and step into it with both feet. Now if your band is really um, stiff, you might be fine just as you are, but if it's not, you might choke up a little bit doing an extra wrap. And now you're gonna use those upper trapezius muscles to shrug the shoulders up and then let them be drawn down by the TheraBand. And again, shrugging up and then just letting them melt back down. And again, up and lowering back down, maybe a few circles now. Let it be yummy. There's some effort involved, but sometimes it's the action of turning on a muscle, say those upper traps that elevate the shoulders, that allow them to shift into the release, right? So on makes it more easy to find a clear off. And one more. Okay, now we're gonna step out of the TheraBand because I didn't set you up in the place that we we're gonna spend the most time. So we're gonna step to the front of the mat and then we're gonna step, I'll let you start with both feet in because that's gonna be um, kind of a good home position. And you can just start with the ends of your TheraBand to begin with. What we're gonna do is take the right foot out and step it back and find a lunge. Your lunge doesn't have to be really um, wide. It can be pretty um, modest and narrow. And now I think we're gonna choke up a little bit, depending on your TheraBand. So if you are working with a really thick, firm TheraBand, don't feel like you need to do that. But if you're not, and you're like me, you're gonna use a little bit more tension on the strap. So what we're gonna do is start with the shoulders, draw them up, back and down, and then simply settle into your lunge, bring that right hip forward, left sit bone down and back, and give me some just easy bicep curls. So you're gonna feel your elbows reach down towards the earth as your arms fold in and the shoulder muscles stay long, the muscles of the upper traps, right? So we keep reaching the elbows down to elongate those muscles that connect from the spine and skull down to the shoulder blades. And then pause, take your arms now out to the sides and lower and reach out. And again, see if you can feel your shoulders sink down as the arms float wide. And if your arms aren't moving as high as mine or as high as you thought they were supposed to, don't push it. If you start to feel any neck tension, just back off a little bit, stay a little lower. And last two, and last one, and then lower the arms. And now I'm gonna have you un unwind if you have extra tension and we're gonna reach the arms forward and up as we bend the right knee and then lower. And reach as you dip the knee towards the mat. This can be a tiny knee bend, doesn't need to be aggressive. And for TheraBand stretching, you don't have to get your arms overhead. Let's do one more and then lower and step back to the band at the front. Okay, so now we're gonna step back with the left foot. Take your time finding your balance. And here is where Padabanda comes into a really um, useful, um, it becomes a very useful tool. So think about that front foot and see if you can feel all four corners connected into the mat thanks to your pinky ball and your mindfulness. Now, wrapping the band one time 
We're gonna drop the shoulders down, reach the elbows down, and bend the elbows, bicep curls. Keep drawing that left hip forward, right sit bone down and back as you shrug the shoulders down, keeping the chest open and lifted. And three, and two, and one, and then lower. Out to the side, shoulders shrug up, shoulders shrug down, and continue dropping as the arms reach wide. And again. And again, don't feel as though your arms need to get to any particular place, but the more you reach out, and so your shoulder blades drop and rotate, you're gonna get the best out of this. Two more, and one more, and then lower. Unwrap the strap if you have an extra wrap. Take your shoulders down, oops, and we're gonna do arms forward as the knee lowers, and reset, and dip, and feel your arms reach in opposition as your knee reaches towards the earth, your arms reach towards the sky, and give you this integration through the whole body. One more. And then lengthen, and we'll step the feet back to the front. Let's just do a few more shoulder shrugs and circle them to further release any buildup of effort in the shoulders. And then we're just gonna simply let the ball, or the TheraBand, rest to the side and we're going to come right down to a seated position now have your pinky ball handy and then just simply lower yourself down to the mat okay so what we're going to do now is massage the hips but before we do i want you to feel your feet on the mat in parallel and take a moment to get just aware of the bottom of your foot right so maybe your knees open and come in a few times and then land them evenly. So you feel all four corners. And then from here, we're just gonna move right into a bridge. So you're gonna curl the tail under, peel up and make your way into your bridge. On any given day that can feel really awesome or it can feel a little stuck in places like your low back or your hips. But as you arrive in the top, notice how easy is it to connect to the entire foot. If you're allowing certain muscles to dominate, like these outer hip muscles that are often tighter, then you're gonna pull, be pulled out onto your outer border of your foot. You don't have your padabanda and your hips aren't active in a balanced way. You don't have the inner support. So try to land all four corners, the inner border of the foot on the mat, along with some inner thighs, and then roll back down. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the pinky ball to help us release some of our known dominance in our outer hips, and then we'll bridge again, okay? So you're gonna lift your hips up and put the ball just kind of right in the center of your right glute. So it's like a bullseye, and you're right in the middle of it, or a target with a bullseye, and you're right in the bullseye. And then you're gonna let your weight come down into the ball and simply rock and roll your hips side to side. So we wanna cover the entire surface of the glute um, eventually, but where we started is kind of in line with a really famous part of the body that's often tight and restricted, and that's the piriformis. So if you know all about it, great. If you don't, you can just trust that this part of the body is often tight and it needs a little bit of um, help sometimes to get out of that tightness. So by leaning into the ball can really help unwind it. Now you're gonna take the ball and shift it up a little bit higher. So it started in the middle, now you're creeping your way up to the top of the glute and just rocking side to side. And maybe two adjustments will go up. So it's like almost like you're, you're wearing striped underpants and we're rolling side to side following the stripes, okay? And then we're gonna come down again to the middle and a little bit below. I always start in the middle and then work up or down, but I kind of often realize once I do that I could have just started at the top or the bottom. But anyway, here we are, working our way down now towards the sit bone and enjoying what we find there. And you guys are welcome to stop at any of these locations and spend extra time if you're finding something that really needs your TLC. And then the last thing we're gonna do before we move to the other side is put the ball 
or to the outside of the hip, and then we're actually going to turn onto our side. So we're going to get the ball into the side of the hip, the one, the place that you would, you know, touch would call the side there, and move on to it below the bony prominence of your pelvis and above the trochanter. So you're not in right up against one of your hard bony points. You're in the soft tissue between. And then you might just lay there and breathe because that can be pretty intense. Or you might move a little bit, lifting and lowering the knee, um, and then just making some little wiggles happen in there. You guys all feel something there? You can wave or just cry. <laughs> Whatever you feel, keep breathing and be kind to your body. Okay, I think that we can take our time and move off of there. And then before we go on to the other side, I invite you to just rest back in your sort of pre-bridge position and just notice how your two sides feel. You've invited some life and uh, vitality and stimulation into that left side. I'm sorry, I said right in the beginning. We're still doing right leg, um, wherever you are. Um, and then just take your bridge again. Draw your abdominals in, peel up into your bridge and stay there for a moment. And notice what that's like. And now I don't guarantee this is gonna be true for you, but I feel with that release happening, that it's much easier for me to land on the inner border of my foot along with the outer border. And that's gonna give me access to my inner thigh. So let's roll down and set up for the other side. So you'll place the ball under your left cheek and let's do the thing where we start at the top. Okay, so you have striped underpants on and you're starting in the upper stripe up near the low back, but not into the low back, and massaging there side to side. And now you might have discovered um, at this time that there's likely to be differences to your two sides. One side might be more tender than the other, and that's pretty normal because we just don't quite live in symmetry but we still strive to bring balance to our two sides. So if you need a little extra time on one, you take it and then move your ball down a stripe and keep rocking your hips side to side. And then we'll take it down another stripe. If I am going faster than you, don't worry. You're just gonna enjoy um, where you are and catch up when you're ready and then taking yourself into a lower position once more, making your way towards your sit bone. And then we're gonna let the ball be released and move to the outside of the hip. Now, all the points that I'm having us do right now are awesome and yet there's still more, so just know you could spend a lot more time here. If you're tipping over onto your left side of that glute, your whole body doesn't need to roll over, but it could. It's just that you're really trying to put the weight of the outer hip onto the ball. And then maybe you're still, or maybe you're moving. You could lift and lower that bottom knee or rock side to side. All these options are good. And then we're gonna take the ball out from under the hip. Now. We're gonna set up again with our parallel feet for bridging that padabanda, that sort of rootedness to the feet and start with a nice breath in and then exhale, curl the tail under and peel up. And happily to report that release on the left side has brought balance to both sides now, feeling that easy connection to the inner border of the foot. And there's this engagement along my midline that wasn't there before. So I'm just really happy about that and then roll back down. We're gonna do two more bridges like that, just feeling that connection to both edges of the foot and rolling back down. And one more time. And then hold at the top. And we're gonna go into our hip dips, letting one hip sink towards the mat while the other hip spirals towards the sky. So think about the up just as much as the down and then bring your hips to level and we'll roll back down. Now we're gonna take our roller across the mat. So 
however you need to get to it. Go ahead and find it now and set it up across the mat with your feet on the roller. And then we're going to take our spine just into that long setup for bridging. And you're just going to move the roller a little bit under your feet. So rolling from heel to toes and massaging just a little bit more, feeling all those surface areas. And you'll notice you get more contact with the heel and the ball of foot. The arch by being an arch doesn't make as much contact. You'll know, get that lateral arch to connect into the roller a little bit more than the inner arch, which is okay. That's the design of the foot. Now, once your roller is back underneath your feet in what you would consider your bridge position, we're gonna move the pelvis. So you're gonna start with your breath, lifting into your inhale, letting your abdominals rise, and then exhale, draw the abdominals in and curl the tail under. And then inhale, rock towards six o'clock. Exhale, 12 o'clock. And repeat, inhale to six, and exhale to 12. As you do this, see if you can find your sit bones and feel them moving around the back of your legs. So you're going to drop down towards the mat, moving away from your thigh bones. And then as you tuck the tail under your sit bones, gather up the back of the legs towards your knees. And now we're going to take the next one into a bridge. You're going to scoop the belly and curl the tail under and peel up into your bridge. Now in this position, Padabanda isn't going to be quite as obvious. As I said, you're going to feel the outer border of your foot more. So see if you can feel your thigh bones as if they're spiraling in towards one another to keep your legs from turning out. And then roll your spine back down. And again, draw the abdominals in, curl the tail under, peeling up into your bridge, taking your time, feeling the abdominals stay connected, and then roll back down. And again, curl and peel through the spine. Now hold at the top, and we're gonna try to move the roller out just a few inches and in and out towards the heel, and in, bringing your weight to your toes. Heels and toes, heels and toes. Pause there, roll down, and find some zesty power in those hamstrings, okay? Now we're gonna bring the roller up to the opposite end of the mat. Place it behind you, we'll come up, and we'll use it behind our upper back. We'll take the hands to the back of the head once you're in position. The roller is now just around the bottom of your shoulder blades. And then you're just going to spill back over the roller, stretching the front of the body, the front of the chest, and then nod the chin and curl up, letting the bottom of your rib cage drop down into the mat. Not just the front, but the back of the rib cage sink into the lower depths of your mat. And then repeat moving with your breath, inhale back, exhale to rise up, and stretch. This is just a yummy version of one of the sort of key abdominal exercises in Pilates, that ab curl. Finding that movement in your entire rib cage, the front and back of your rib cage really tilting down into the earth. And then let's curl up and hold. What I'm going to have you do now is rock to one side. I'm going to the right and we're going to massage our lats, these muscles that run from our low back up to our arm. And just massage just behind the armpit by rolling this way and that. Good. And then we'll come over to the other side. Some of this stuff you might not find terribly tender, but what I know is that in the complex of the shoulder that we've already started, Massaging, this is one of the larger contributors to restriction in the arm and shoulder. So it just wouldn't be a proper shoulder release party without massaging your lats. Okay, let's take our legs out to straight and then stretch through the heels, flexing the feet, draw the toes back towards your shins and then inhale back and exhale, curling up and inhale, stretch back. Exhale, curl up. Feeling the bottom of the ribs drop down. Trying to flatten 
the low back into the mat. It won't make it, but it's going in that direction, opening the front of the hips and lengthening back. And now we're gonna curl up and hold, and then take the arms forward and exhale, scoop to roll all the way up. And then stack the spine, pause, grab your roller, bring it to the front of your mat, and you're gonna place it underneath your lower leg. Okay, and then reset. We're right where we were just a moment ago. Lifting up tall, what you're gonna do is you're gonna curl the tail under and roll back. And as you start to roll down, you're gonna bend your knees and bring the roller in towards you. Inhale, the arms back. Exhale, reach the fingertips forward. Roll through the low waist and stretch all the way up. And then roll back down, curl the tail under, bend the knees and roll back. And you'll find as you roll through your low back, having the roller to help you fluidly curl the tail under, bending the knees will give you a little more access to movement in your low back. So really use the roller to help you find that continuity through your rolling, bending the knees, come all the way down and pause at the bottom. Okay, we're gonna reset my props out of the way and then set your feet on the mat once again for a little bit more bridging. So we're gonna take the hands behind the head. And yes, I said bridging, but there's more to this story. So what we're gonna do is we're going to nod the chin and curl up with the upper body. Find the ribs and see if you can tilt them down into the mat. Get the bottom ribs and the front and back to anchor down. And then scoop and curl the tail under as if you're coming up into a bridge. And now what's going to happen is you're going to pull the belly in and keep this flexion. You're kind of in the C curve through your spine. You're not going to unwind it, but you're going to curl the tail under more, more, more. And as the hips get higher, your upper body is just going to rock, but it's not going to lay down, right? And then you're going to try to reverse that, sink the ribs, curl the tail under more, and rise up with the upper body. And again, curl the tail under. It's going to rock you on your rib cage. And then you're gonna rock on your rib cage to come back to this position. And again, and so it's not a full bridge and it's not a full sort of uh, release of either exercise. Nothing is getting let go, right? Your upper ab curl is intact, active the whole time. Your bridging engagement is active the whole time. And then roll down, keep the, the spine in this deep flexion and then float one leg in a tabletop and then the other. Keep that connection, nothing has changed. And then you're gonna take your right foot down, maybe tap the roller and up and alternating side. And one more each side before we add our twist. Sorry, that was a little false um, promise. We're gonna to turn towards our high knee, twist towards the knee that's lifted and Good, one more each side, make it balanced. And then come center, lower your head and shoulders down and then land your feet down. Um, we can move the roller now out of the way and just set your feet in their familiar parallel. What we're gonna do now is grab our pinky ball again and just do another little extra awesome uh, trick for our shoulders. So this can be a little bit less clear to find, but I think you'll you'll be able to. You're gonna take the pinky ball and put it right behind the top of your shoulder. And to the person observing you, they'd actually still be able to see it. It's not hidden under the shoulder. It's almost kind of um, coming out from under you. But we're trying to put the ball into the very most upper muscle fibers of the shoulder. So it's not gonna lift you off yet much. So we're gonna do a few different positions, but that's where we're gonna start. And then just let the weight of your shoulder rest into the mat. And then start by taking your same side arm out on a circle to the side. Yep, as I get to the top, it really gets interesting. So three of those. And then try the same arm moving up to the sky and overhead. And don't move 
into pain. If it feels tender, that's one thing. If it feels um, really painful, then you're not needing to continue. You just might get to here. But what you're doing is you're helping to mobilize and release some more of these stuck muscle fibers. Okay, before we move on, same series, but we're gonna lift our hips off of the mat. This puts more weight into the ball and shifts the angle into the upper shoulder. And same thing, three arm circles to the right. And one more. And then arm overhead. Forward and up. And down. Two more like that. Bonus bridge. Feel your feet. Padabanda. Get those roots growing deep. And then lower the arm and roll down. So you can take this ball out from under your shoulder and just sense into it how it feels there. And then we'll move on to the other side. So um, I'm just sprinkling in some of my most um, valued tools for the pinky ball on the shoulders. Um, please know there's a lot more and if you want to spend more time here, you can move that ball um, into a number of different places under the shoulder. So on the left side, same thing, your ball is just peekabooing out from under your shoulder. And then three arm circles out to the side, snow angels. And then making it even, you'll come up to the sky and back and forward and up and overhead. And one more time. And then bring it back and then simple bridge, lift the hips and keep the feet anchored with that pata banda and then circle out to the side and lower down and circle and lower and circle and lower and then up and overhead forward and up and lower it down and forward and up and lower one more time and then release and lower your hips down take the gritty ball out from under your shoulder and set it out of the way so now what i'm going to have you do is roll to your side we'll do this position first you're going to start lying on your side with your knees bent and your hands stacked palms together your head resting down to the mat if this causes you any strain in your neck you can put a pillow under there okay and then you're going to take your top hand on a big circle and let your torso your shoulder girdle twist open towards the sky as your hand stays on the mat the entire time as best you can you're keeping your knees on the mat on the opposite side but if they need to move if the top leg needs to lift you allow it you want this to be really friendly invoking some stretch into the muscles that connect again the arm into the trunk all this good stuff okay and then after three of those you can come up and we'll take your hand under the head and then your knees still stacked you're going to just open and close the top knee so we're going into our clamshells so we released these guys and now we're using them and it's really nice to do that combination they work better once they've had a little bit of that warming massage and releasing tension so strength and tension are not the same thing. All right, so now we're gonna bring our knees together, our feet towards the ceiling and continue into these sort of more um, grand clamshells. Feeling your top waist stay long, a little help from that hand coaching the pelvis down the length of the mat. And then take the knees apart, pause, lengthen, um, lift the toes away from one another so you've got frog legs now. You're going to want probably your top hand on the mat for this and then you're going to squeeze the legs together and straighten them out and then bend them back in and squeeze. And you can really put some sort of um, style into this, imagining yourself swimming very um, gracefully like a frog through your pond, but this upper body posture is all just laid back cruising through the pond and last two the last one and then reach the legs long and lower down let's turn on to our tummies and roll to the other side for those of you needing to you can do as i'm doing and swap by 
flipping your whole setup. I love all the props, but they're like having a mess at all times. All right, so your hands are stacked out in front of your shoulders. Your head is relaxed down towards the mat. Your knees are bent. And then we're doing three yummy full-size circles for the pinwheel arms. Hopefully you're able to enjoy the entire circle without running into anything. It can be a real bummer to have obstacles. So find your open space. And again, allow the shoulders to turn fully towards the sky while you encourage the knees to stay in the opposite side of the mat and then take yourself to the front and reset for your clamshell. So you'll prop your head up with your bottom hand. Knees are bent, hips are stacked, and we begin with a top knee opening. Good. And again, finding those connections to the muscles we've released. The glutes here are working and the inner thighs are stretching, allowing them to work together in harmony is one of the best things we can offer them. And then knees together, feet lifted, and we'll open and connect, and open and connect. Just this extra stretchy version, lengthening the inner thighs every repetition. Good. Two. And last one, now pause there with the knees open, open the toes away from one another as well, top hand on the mat, and you'll squeeze your heels together all the way up to straight, and then inhale, bend. And again, exhale, swim casually through your palms as you draw your abdominals in more deeply each and every time. Good. And three, and two, and last one, and then lower the legs down. Okay, we're gonna turn onto our tummy as we also bring our roller back to our mat, placing it across the mat in front and reaching the arms over the roller, starting the roller closer to your elbows than your wrists. Legs are long and attacked, or attached, <laughs> not attacked, um, attached to your pelvis through your inner thighs. So feel like you're drawing your thigh bones into your pelvis through the inner thighs and then press your pubic bone into the mat. You're going to roll the roller towards you and let your heart float up and then lower back down. Feel your upper arm bones slurped into the shoulder joints the same way. You're going to slurp them back as your heart lifts up. Feel your arms karate chop down into the roller to activate under the armpits. And feel the front of your spine, the connective tissue that attaches the vertebra to one another. Those fascial connections up the front of your spine. Feel that stretch. And lower back down. One more time. Coming up, you're going to hold there and hover. And again, feel your thigh bones slurped into the hip sockets to the inner thighs. Shoulder joints slurping the arm bones back. And then you're just going to hover the heart up to make room for this elbow bend. Drawing the roller in towards you and out and and away and lift your heart more and lift your abdominals more and one more time and then reach out and lower down okay we're gonna take the hands to the mat press back if you want to take a child's pose here you're welcome to or we're gonna meet in all fours we're gonna put the roller underneath our knees and then set up in all fours once again. And then widen your chest in the front, lift up out of the wrists. And we can also have the same sort of rooted connection through the hands. Asta Banda is hand lock. And you feel all four corners of your palms anchored into the mat and your fingers radiating out from there. And then you're just going to play with a little cat and cow. And again. And one more time. And then extend. Now, 
taking your toes off of the mat. Say they might have, might have been up already, but if they weren't, now your toes are off. What we're gonna do is we're gonna round the spine and we're gonna round and lift the abdominals and bring the knees forward towards our hands and then reach the knees back, reach the chest forward. Exhale, curl the tail under, lift the abdominals round and think of lifting the knees up towards your rib cage and then roll back, heart forward. Now the arms are really active here, lifting up out of the palms as we lift the knees into our chest and again, and away. One more time. Exhale, round and lift up and then lengthen out. Now hold there. Find your neutral, active across the entire waist, and then you're going to start by taking your right leg straight back behind you. If you need your toes down here, this is a completely reasonable thing to do. If you can stay with toes off, that's more challenging and exciting, but not always available. So we wobble and find our way into our opposite arm and leg exercise, right? Whee! And then land it down. So take your time. Left leg goes back. And then when you're ready, you might add the arm. Stay there and connect into what you're feeling. Lift it up out of that wrist and then land it down. Okay, and now we're gonna take the roller. Let's walk the knees forward to the mat and the roller will be under our ankles. And then we're gonna come down onto our forearms here and interlace your hands. Okay, and then lifting up out of your elbows, we're starting with this really powerful shoulder connection again, staying really active under the armpits, drawing the shoulders away from the ears so the neck feels long, and then lift your abdominals and round your spine. Take another breath here and on the exhale, you're gonna just hover the abdominals, hover the knees and lengthen the legs out and you're in a plank. And then bring it in, land the knees down. Okay, so that's one and we're gonna do several. If you wanna land your knees every time, that's completely reasonable. If you wanna go for a bigger challenge, you can keep the knees off. We're gonna lift up out of the elbows, lengthen and stretch out on an inhale. Exhale, pull in, inhale out. Exhale, pull in and stretch out and really lift the abdominals to lift the knees into your chest. Two more and one more and land your knees down. Awesome job. Come up from the elbows off to the off the arms completely up to the knees. Now we've done this exercise a fair bit in the past few classes but we haven't had the roller in this position. So if you notice that it causes you any discomfort in your knees, just ditch the roller, okay? And if you know you need padding under your knees, we're gonna do thigh stretch, okay? Grab padding, put a ball between your inner thighs if that helps you. And then we're just gonna get started lifting up, pulling your abdominals in. Use that engagement of the abdominals to help lift up on the front of your pelvis, draw down on the sit bones, and then reach your arms out in front. You're gonna pull the belly in more as you tilt back and then come forward. And again, tilt back and come forward. And two more. Good, and one more, tilt. And then come forward. So those are your quads we're working and stretching. Now we're going to use the roller to massage them. So you're gonna bring the roller a little bit further up the mat. And oftentimes our mats will bunch up while we're rolling around on them, but we'll go ahead and let that be. So you're gonna come onto your forearms again with the roller under your thighs and just rock forward and back. Keep those low abdominals lifted so that you're not allowing the low back to sink and pinch. And then you can turn your heels in towards one another to get the more inner quads and then try turning your toes in towards one another to shift towards the outer quads. Now that works really great, but I like to be able to get even more. So I might turn a little bit to the side and turn all 10 toes to one side. And now I'm on the outer quad more than before and the inner quad as well of the opposite leg. And then same thing as I turn to the other side, I'm putting the weight into the outer right thigh and the inner left thigh. And then you may have been 
expecting this already, but we're gonna turn all the way onto the outside of one of our legs. You can put the top foot down on the mat to give you that extra sort of um, back up here and roll, or you can stack your legs and roll. For those of you with a um, black roller, you might find this to be a bit nasty. Or maybe you do it all the time and your IT bands and quads are in great pliable shape. Either way, super good for us. Gonna make our bodies feel much more at ease as we go on with our day and week. So tipping over, going to the other side, rock and roll on that opposite IT band on the front of the quad. And then take your time and you can come all the way off of there. What we're gonna do next is just stay kneeling and use the roller in our hands. So I heard a little bobby pin malfunction. So what we're gonna do is take the roller, let's go to the back first. So you'll bring it around to the back of your body and set it up near your sit bones. And then walk your hands in towards your midline, palms facing forward, shoulders rolling back, and you're gonna bend the elbows and then lower back down. So the roller is gonna roll up and down the back of your sacrum pretty much. It's not gonna come particularly high, but as your elbows bend, your chest is gonna be stretched open, your biceps and triceps can activate if you push into the roller with your palms and two more like that. Good, and one more and then release. Bring the roller to the front. Take the roller out in front of your body and up towards the sky. And then lower it back down and up and lower. And this time you're gonna bring it up, place it just around the back of your head. Don't let it push your head forward. So you bring your head back and let the roller be sort of anchored behind your head. And then we're just gonna swivel side to side. And then pause at the center, take the roller back up to the top, shoulders down, and same swivel. Let the roller even drift a little bit beyond your shoulders. And then bring it back to the center and lower it down. Take your arms on a big circle up to the sky, reaching up, 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 brace your palms together. Feeling the engagement down through the knees into the earth and up through the fingertips of the hands. And then pressing your palms into one another, we're gonna bring our hands down to rest in front of our heart where we will finish for the day. And I hope that you enjoyed class. I hope that you um, get to feel the benefits of all the release work we did today and that you actually experience more ease in your neck and shoulders and your hips and in everything you do. Um, so pay extra attention today Awesome job, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me. As always, subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more videos like this. Follow me on Instagram at arwinbrook underscore Pilates for more tips on how to use your props at home. I hope you had lots of fun with your pinky ball and you feel fantastic today because of all the wonderful release work we did. And I'd love to hear your feedback. So comment below and I will happily read your comments. Thank you.